Wow, wow, wow. Time flies, right? Time flies, especially、um, if you're having fun. And, and I've been having a lot of fun. And I know I haven't recorded in a long time, but here I am, you know, giving it another shot.、Um, I've actually been working on my Spanish podcast and, and I've been preparing an episode on stress. So I kind of decided to do an English version. Uh, two, and I'm probably, <laughs> probably going to publish the English version first. I don't know why、um, doing this in English seems easier for me. And、um, let's kind of dig deeper or a little bit deeper on this subject.、Um, I'm going to compare stress to the check engine light of a car. Do you know what I'm talking about? I'm sure you're, you're familiar with, with that light. And you know, the light. Is not the problem. The light is the one telling us that there is a problem and that we need to do something to resolve it. That's what the light is all about. It's a notification. And that's stress. Stress is not the problem. Stress is what's telling us that there is a problem and that we need to take action. In order to resolve it. And I know, I know, I know what you're thinking. Yes, stress can be a problem, but only if we don't listen to it. See, stress is our ally if we listen to it and our enemy if we don't. And, and what is stress trying to tell us? Well, basically, we either have to confront, retreat, Wait or give in. And, and this is my version of the, of the fight, flight, freeze, and fawn stress、um, response. I'm just taking on a more strength based approach, and I'm calling it confront, retreat, wait, or give in. All right, so, so here we go.、Uh, welcome to the most inconsistent. Podcast of them all. Chronicles of a Psycho Professor. I don't even know what episode this is. 18, maybe. All right, so, so let's think of stress as the check engine light on a car. And like I said, I, I, I know、um, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, the light itself is not the problem. The light is what's telling us that there is a problem. And, and we can turn off the light somehow. I mean, we can possibly put a piece of tape over it.、Uh, we can remove the fuse that sends it electricity, energy. Or we can simply ignore it, like we typically do with the actual light in our car.、Um, but this, this doesn't solve the problem.、Um, We simply can't see the light anymore. That's all. The real problem is still there.、Um, kind of like an ostrich that sticks you know, its head、uh, in the ground. You know,、um, it can't see its predators, but they, they're still there. And, and actually, I think this whole ostrich head in the dirt thing is, is actually a myth.、Um, but you get the idea. Or, or, like when, when, when there's a monster in your room, you know, and you cover your head、uh, with your blanket, you know, the monster's still there. You know, you just can't see it. Right? Or when we ignore the homeless person begging for money, you know,、um, the person is still there even if we ignore them. So, so stress is, is not something that,、um, that we need to get rid of. It's something that we need to listen to because, because it's telling us something. It's warning us that something is wrong and that we need to take action to change things. All right? And it's a very, very interesting process. It involves our senses, it involves our brain, it involves our endocrine system, and of course, it involves our nervous system and, and other things, I, I guess, you know?、Um, so, so when we encounter a situation that is perceived As a threat or as a potential threat, our brain, our endocrine system, our nervous system all work together、um, 
to get us ready to deal um, with a threat. There's cortisol and adrenaline. You know, these, uh, these hormones are released. Our, our body experiences several changes. Uh, for example, our heart rate increases. Um, our blood pressure rises. Uh, we start breathing faster and, and more shallow. Uh, our pupils dilate and our muscles tense up and, and we start sweating and, and our digestive system slows down. And actually, there's an increase in glucose production. And all of this and more happens to get us ready to deal with the threat. And all this kind of feels bad. It feels uncomfortable. But it's necessary for our survival. Actually, we've survived as a species for thousands of years thanks to this stress response um so so i kind of have to say that this process even though it feels bad and it's uncomfortable it's normal um it's healthy it's it's even necessary right uh stress warns us that something is wrong and it gets us ready to make the necessary changes and, and the typical stress response kind of involves four different responses. You know, the fly, fight, flight, freeze, or fawn. And you can Google this, uh, and this is what you'll likely find. You can also ask um, chat GPT, right, and read more about these responses. Th th this information is everywhere. But when you dig a little deeper, you will find that these responses are typically talked about um, in a negative tone. Uh, fight, for example, is kind of equated with aggression and violence. Uh, flight is equated uh, to, to avoidance and, and procrastination. Freeze, well, obviously to the inability to act, you know, when, when you can't uh, say or do anything. You're kind of paralyzed, you're kind of stuck. And fawn is, is usually talked about within the context of trauma, when, when kind of the victim concedes to the abuser, abuser. or um, as a coping mechanism uh, that, that we use to avoid um, confrontation or to avoid rejection or to avo avoid negative consequences, right? And, and, and all these consequences might stem from a fear of uh, disapproval, of abandonment, or, or, I don't know, a desire to maintain harmony, right? And all this is good. It, it, it's necessary information. Um, it makes sense, and it really does us good to know it. Again, you can Google this stuff. You can ask um, ChatGPT. It's very, very interesting, and it's very, very important for us uh, to know about this stress response. But I'm going to spin this a little. I'm going to give it a positive strength-based uh, definition or tone. And I'm changing the terms fight, flight, freeze, and fawn to the following. To confront, retreat, wait, and give in. Confront, retreat, wait, and give in. And call me crazy, and yes, I know, I am. Um, but I believe that stress is our soul um, calling us to reflect, change, and grow. I like, <laughs> I like how that sounds, right? Stress is our soul calling us to reflect, change, and grow. If we listen to it, we experience positive change. If we don't, then we experience what is called, you know, chronic stress. This is when stress itself becomes a problem. Um, look, let me kind of uh, get into this even deeper. Uh, two, sy two systems, two systems <laughs> are involved in stress. The sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system can be seen kind of as the gas pedal, right? It gets us ready to deal with the stressor, with the threat. Uh, it's the one that causes all the physiolo physiological changes um, I mentioned before, right? Once the stressor is dealt with or averted, then the parasympathetic nervous system kicks in. 
the parasympathetic nervous system can be considered the brake pedal, right? This system um, allows us to rest, to relax, and to recover. The three R's, rest, relax, and recover. And we need this in order to be ready for the next challenge, right? These systems are designed to kind of work together, to complement each other. There must be a balance between the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. There are times to step on the gas, no doubt, but there are times to hit the brakes, to slow down. You know, we can't live hauling ass all the time. And stress becomes a problem when the sympathetic nervous system is continually activated. You know, um, this is called chronic stress and it leads to all kinds of, of health problems. And, and when I say health, I'm talking about mental, physical, social and spiritual health. Right. And no, chronic stress is not good for us. Again, look this up. The effects of chronic stress. You'll learn a lot and maybe you can identify some of the symptoms. A and stress has become such a problem today because we kind of don't know how to activate the parasympathetic nervous system. Um, we kind of don't know how to stop, how to disconnect, how to relax, how to rest, how to recover. And that's why stress today is such a problem because we have the sympathetic nervous system activated. You know, we're hauling ass all the time and we just don't know how to stop. Right? How to engage the three R's, the relax, rest, recover. We definitely need to find balance in our lives. We can't always be on the go. You know, I know we live in a culture that kind of emphasizes this overachieving mentality, but I really think that this overachieving mentality is sick. <laughs> and, and I mean that in a bad way, because for most of you, the word sick means good, but for me, it means bad. There's kind of a, a generational gap in, in language here. We need to find balance, balance between the material and the spiritual. Um, and of course, an, an important part of stress management it is learning to relax and calm down, like I just mentioned, mentioned you know, breathing exercises, uh, grounding exercises, uh, mindfulness techniques. These things are amazing, helpful. And, and I recommend you learn some of this stuff. However, we must be careful that we're not simply turning off the light without addressing what the light is telling us. Remember, the check engine light is actually telling us something's wrong and that we need to fix it. If you turn off the light, if you ignore the light, you're not addressing the problem. You know, a little whiskey, for example, some weed, a benzo, you know, like a Xanax. All this can calm us down for a moment. They, they do. These substances do help us calm down, but they do not help us solve the problem. It just makes it easier for us to ignore the problem because we feel so relaxed, you know, so good. So kind of the problem is not a problem at that moment. You know, and of course, all these substances can create a whole new problem, something that we all know as addiction. Right. So remember that stress is telling us something. If we listen and if we act accordingly, we experience positive change. Um, if we don't listen we encounter problems that only get worse with time, okay? So we have four basic um, options here. We, when we're stressed, when we're, when, we're, when we're having this experience, we have four basic options. We can confront, retreat, wait, or give in. Let me kind of summarize these four very briefly before we call it quits today. You know, there are situations that we must confront, that we must face head on, grab the bull by its horns, some people say. We need to stop avoiding and we need to stop procrastinating. You get it? 
This is what we mean by confronting. There are situations that we must confront, right? We need to stop avoiding and we need to stop procrastinating. However, there are times for us to retreat. And what does this mean? This means that we must learn how to set healthy boundaries. We need to learn to say no, to let go, to forgive and say goodbye and move on. You get it? So some situations call for us to confront, face on, grab the bull by its horns, stop avoiding, stop procrastinating. But some situations require that we retreat, that we set healthy boundaries, that we say no, because saying no can be very, very difficult, that we let go, that we forgive. And sometimes you can forgive and say goodbye. A lot of people give forgiveness, get forgiveness a little bit wrong. They think that if I forgive you, I need to keep you in my life. The truth is, sometimes we need to forgive and say goodbye and move on. But there are some situations that require us to wait, to do nothing. We need the poo said. <laughs> sometimes the best thing to do is to do nothing. Did you get that? Sometimes the best thing to do is to do nothing. We need to step back and let the water settle in order to see more clearly, all right? Because here's a very poetic thing I wrote. Calmness and serenity are necessary for clarity. That's something that we need to tweet and post everywhere. Calmness and serenity are necessary for clarity. So sometimes we don't have to confront. Sometimes we don't have to retreat. Sometimes we just need to wait. Do nothing. Step back. Let the water settle so that we can see more clearly. And I want you guys to kind of post this next quote. Just give me credit. <laughs> uh, calmness and serenity are necessary for clarity. Right? And finally, some situations require that we give in that we give in. Sometimes we need to simply hang in there. Put one foot in front of the other. Do what we need to do for now until the horizon changes and we get more opportunities. Maybe the job you're in right now is not ideal. You don't like it. Maybe you hate it, but you need money. You have no other job, so you have to be there. So you simply need to make the best of it. It's not the ideal situation, but it's your current situation. You know, I, I can't say this enough. If you're there, stop complaining and make the best of it. Sometimes it's just a stepping stool to get you somewhere else, somewhere else right? It's just a stepping stone. That's what I meant, a stepping stone to get you somewhere else. So if you're in a place where you really don't want to be and you don't like it, but that's the only place you can be for now. You have to kind of give in until the horizon changes and we get more opportunities. So that's kind of the summarized version, summarized, of um, this issue of confronting, retreating, waiting, or giving in. Again, if we make the right decision at the right time and take the appropriate action, you know, we either confront, or we either retreat, or we either wait, or we either give in, we resolve the experience of stress. And we move on with our lives. If we don't make the right decision, or if we don't do anything, we're just kind of just not taking action, well, we will continue experiencing stress, and we will continue experiencing its negative consequences, all right? So what am I talking about? Stress is that check engine light that lets you know something's wrong and that pushes you to do something about it. What can you do? Hopefully you learned that already, right? What can you do? Confront, retreat, wait, or give in. I think my following episodes I'll talk about these four options in a little more detail, maybe, I guess. We'll see. Hey, guys, thank you for listening. This was Chronicles of a Psycho Professor. And one last thing, be good and...